Hi everyone, so let's continue our journey and uh, what we are going to do here is we have this lambda.ts because we want to convert this service into lambda so what we need to do we need to write a simple lambda handler so we will just import the couple of things which we need so we have already added all these modules in our package JSON so the important module is uh, which we have added let me see if we have done that so we need a couple of modules in our package JSON. So I will just introduce them, which is AWS Lambda and uh, all the required dependencies. So this we can add as a dev dependencies, AWS Lambda. And we need Express, uh, AWS Serverless Express as a dev dependency. So this is the type definitions. First we will add and then AWS Serverless Express this we will add as a dependency also okay both are done because this is required module this will give us uh, the things which we need so I did npm install so that we can get all the dependencies added here in the non modules AWS Serverless Express we have everything now we'll go and write our lambda so the lambda definition, I will just try to zoom it in what all things we need for writing a simple lambda. So all these things we need from AWS lambda and uh, because we are writing a simple handler function. And I will just try to add something. So this is simple export const handler and the type of handler is API gateway handler. gateway proxy handler okay this is going to be a sync function api gateway proxy handler i should be able to import this okay this is api this is strange so i can get it from AWS Lambda. So we need a context. Somehow I need to, when you do npm install, you need to restart the VS code so that all the TypeScript definitions can get set. It takes two arguments, right? Any Lambda function takes two arguments. Event is API gateway event. API gateway proxy event. So the first argument is a event object and then another object, another argument is a context. This also we are importing from AWS Lambda. Now this is resolved. Here we can also use some kind of a logging. So we will know what all things we are doing. So I'm just using, I always use debug based logging. import debug from debug and I will add this module and then we can just do is const verbose so we will just try to see what is inside the event and context when we publish this api verbose and handler just for the logging purpose and now I will just try to print what is inside event and what is inside context so we'll get in the cloudwatch logs and here i will do so we need to have a cache server and i will call another method from this same function bootstrap bootstrap server we will call and i will pass the context to that function and what we are going to return the proxy instance of it so proxy we will get from AWS serverless express and here we will just pass cached server cache server I will define on the top event context and promisified of it
that's it because this is a sync function and cache server and bootstrap server i'm going to define so it's like uh, we are going to have a cache server of type server server we are going to get from so this is server instance which we can get from http so let's get it from http i was thinking it can be from express and this is the cache server same we are passing so now we need uh, some function bootstrap so this bootstrap server we are going to define here what this function will be doing is this is also a sync function a sync function this is the function name and we are going to define the parameter context of type context okay and inside this function the objective of this function is to return the or bootstrap the expre express app i mean we are using nest.js so we will bootstrap the nest.js application here we will always check if do we have a cache server already there if no because what happens is uh, this is the lambda so in the lambda if the the cache server is already bootstrapped we don't need to re reinitialize the nest.js app and get the instance what we can do is we can just return the instance if it is already there but if it is not there then we need to bootstrap the nest.js app in the express way so now how we will bootstrap it simply by just uh, defining okay we will be using express for it if cache server doesn't exist then const express app equal to express that we will get from here we will get the express app so first we will get the express import express on top so we'll got the, we got the express app instance now this will be used while cre creating the while initializing the nest.js app and we will do in the same way so what we do in the main.ts nest factory dot create right we got the app instance and then we do app dot listen so what will be changed when we are writing a lambda so here instead of doing this we will just do app await nest factory dot create and here we were doing is nest factory dot create app module i mean it's again a lambda but it's again using the same app module to initialize it here we will pass app module so we'll get we will import the app module here and then th the next argument is the adapter which you want to use next next express this is tricky why it's not showing express adapter this we can import i don't know this vs code is uh, behaving little lazy it's not giving me the imports stuff so this is the express app and the third argument is so create uh, what all options are here the module and nest module application so we got the module nest factory express app and here we can also pass arguments if you want to have an express adapter how we are getting this is going to be coming from nest.js platform express got it express adapter and then some additional argument if you want to specify an argument can be okay you want to allow cross origin resource sharing through and if uh, you want to have some logging you want to enable logging then you can specify okay if the logger is there based on the node environment i can allow and disallow the logging that's it these are just optional argument but the, here what we got we got the app instance of nest.js in form of express adapter because here you can change the express adapter to uh, there are other modes also what is called fastify adapter right fastify adapter or express adapter and now you can set some globals to the app instance like because app is the, the root instance and here you can just set set global prefix all those things you can set here and i'm setting api v1 this is the base for each and every api route i have 
app dot use i can use event context so this event context we need to i mean th these are some global variables and this is the middleware this is the important part this is the middleware you need to register so that we can get everything we can we should be able to extract the body from the aws lambda request uh, payload so event context and uh, i think these are the only if you have helmet uh, then you can just define all these security policies i will try to add the helmet as a middleware so that i need to import it can we go with express okay helmet i need to import what happened with this expression is uh, not callable this i will try to see what is wrong with this and then if there is any a global prefix you wanted to set like a i wanted to use a global pipe see this is all nest js set global pipe i can just set the validation pipe nest js common if you have some global interceptors global filters you wanted to register and you can do i can just want to core filters that's it right so i what i got i got the the request instance app right and this is returning a cache server if it is not there then you just need to bootstrap the nest js application and finally we we just need to initialize this app so if cache server is not there we will just do await app dot in it this will bootstrap this is like uh, this is bootstrap and then create the cache server instance and we'll call create server create server i think this is the function coming from http module create server and proxy from aws serverless express there is another import we need to make create server so the create server how we are creating a server the this logic is defined in the aws serverless express so both create server and proxy both are coming from aws serverless express create server and here we'll just pass uh, the app instance so the create server will take arguments express app express app and all the other options let me see what are the options it takes create server request listener so this is the express app instance and these are the binary mime types if you have some mime types defined like what all mime types your uh, uh, application should support response can be simply undefined and mime types if you have some binary mime types you can define them otherwise keep it optional so this is cached server i'm returning if it is not there we are reinitializing the whole express app i mean the nest js app using nest factory dot create same we are doing here in the main dot if you see nest factory dot create passing the app module here also you can pass the second argument which is like okay uh in a second argument this is second argument right here you can specify all the other argument like choruses to logger what all logging options you wanted to allow or disallow all these things you can set here same thing we are doing in the lambda s factory dot create we got the app instance set all the middleware so these are all, all global middlewares for the security for setting the global prefix uh exception filter uh, some global pipe and global filters you can set here like validation pipe i'm registering here only initializing it and then creating the cached server instance which will be maintained in the memory which will be maintained like if you are getting consecutive calls then it doesn't need to reinitialize the or reboot of the whole lambda you already have a runtime already available if the cached server is already there it will just it should be able to handle the next request without going through the whole the nest js reinitialization process so obviously your application will be faster so this is the the overall logic of lambda.ts and now we i will just try to patch these uh, import fixes and then let's go to the next step okay so let's check our api which we are going to deploy what all it contains so this is a simple rest api i i just want to have a simple mock not connecting to the database and all simple mo user module with a controller and service user controller is something 
get API this is the lambda main dot ts and this is main module earlier I used to have a database connections and all for now I have removed them because if we are talking about database then we need to configure RDS or Dynamo basic demo so we want to stick to only just a REST APIs and there is simple auth middleware that is fine for now we can pass a mock or dummy token and then we can just fetch the user so this is how our simple API looks like authorize pass any garbage for now we are not testing the signature and all for now and if it is running npm run start so this is our API is the mock API or whatever you can call simple setup it is returning ok response so this is what we are going to deploy I mean if you can deploy this then you can deploy any big application or small small different different microservices with their infra setup so we already have their infra setup already here I will just configure my AWS profile and uh, I will prepare the deployment so we just need to do npx cdk deploy and the stack name so stack name is defined here so currently it has nothing this is the stack name here what we will do is here we are going to pass the handler name and the code artifacts like from where this lambda needs to pick the the file path and the handler name log retentions description okay test api lambda to deploy uh, on aws current version environment like here you want you can pass us environment variables also like i have a swagger username so i mean here you can get these uh, things at runtime from process.env because in the lambda you need to pass all these arguments so how we populate these variables that will be populated through gitlab secret variable or github action secret variables here we can get it from let's say for now i will hard code it okay okay but let's say when you deploy your service and what you will really do is you will try to get these runtime environment variables through the gitlab ci or gitlab variables and then you will pass using process.env dot swagger username and swagger password process.env dot password I will just make it required that means this value is there something like this or you can hard code it it's test we are doing then we can capture all these variables through the from process.env through the gitlab secret or gitlab uh, github actions variables or gitlab secret variables through the ci cd at runtime we can populate them in the lambda configurations and it can pick at runtime when the lambda boots up it will check the lambda uh, environment variables and it will get it from there okay so let's get ready here i will pass the runtime variables we'll set up the account like what is your aws account and reason you are targeting for the deployment all these we are going to configure so here we need to specify the account i mean at runtime you need to know what is your cdk default reason eu west one eu east one eu central and all so what I will do is I will try to first check the environment. So this is the environment which we can configure like this. At runtime, uh, we can just check okay process.env dot. Do we have anything like stage? Otherwise, we will just call it as a development. Stage is a variable which will uh track your runtime environment either is it development testing productions or staging and this can be your enum which we can configure so this is like a type which we can create local development productions right and then what we can do is inside infra we can also configure number of accounts because it may be like okay on development you are deploying into the dev, dev aws account so 
for dev there is a target dev ews account for production there can be a prod ews account right there is account segregation so what we can do is const accounts account is actually a record string the type here is It's a, either type is a stage and the value is string. So here we are defining the type is it can be local. If it is a local type, then we can have a some account number. This is AWS account number we have. Local string. So either it can be a local and development, let's say. And for development. It can be another AWS account number. I will just try to refill this and then const env. env is of type cdk.environment and what it takes is two arguments. What is your account? This is required for Lambda at runtime to, to check okay which particular where I'm deploying the application and the reason is I think my reason is US East 1 I will check with my AWS account and this environment then we can just also pass to our lambda so this is the environment which we are configuring so here we can pass couple of arguments in the props so you can see these are the default argument right I can pass this as an argument env stage which can which will tell me okay it is a development production or something stage env this is the custom argument right and stack name stack name is okay rest api and it can be a little dynamic i can just say stage api rest api development production or staging and uh, description rest api for demo so stage is a custom argument which we will pass and here the other important argument is okay what is a lambda path what is a lambda handler these are custom argument which we are specifying lambda path lambda handler so this we need to configure lambda path so lambda path what what will be the lambda path it will be the uh, the zip archive which we are talking about if it is a local let's say we are not segregating the environment so we'll just do is a path dot resolve i need to import path on the top we can just import the required modules so path dot resolve so let's say i will put the zip file i am creating a zip manually here for the code base and this is a dist folder let me just try to create a zip archive first i will just open this in the terminal i think we are already in the terminal npm run build so i will get the latest build and i will zip both these things reveal in the finder oh man it's not happening reveal in the finder okay what i'm doing is dist and node modules i will create a zip archive for this archive.zip you can see this thing already created i will just rename it to the rest api and i will put this in this infra so this is my infra okay where is this so this is what we are deploying rest api now this is inside infra all these things we will be automating rest api and i am inside this bin dot ts lambda handler so what will be my path path dot resolve like what where is my folder so it's a path dot resolve in my current directory name the ad name represents my current working directory i will go one step up from bin inside root directory i will have project directory name so it's like rest api dot zip 
this is the path that's it right this is the lambda path and lambda handler is inside dist folder so it is dist inside dist if you see is there any sub path inside this there is a lambda dot handler right so the path name will become lambda dot handler that's it because handler is a function name the lambda is a file name so lambda path handler and these are the props which we are passing so stack name project name all these basic arguments we can pass Uh, project name and all these things you can get from package JSON also. So let's try to get it from package JSON. So we can get it from require package JSON and manifest dot. What we can do for the project name manifest dot name. So it will just get it from package JSON. Okay, these are the arguments we are passing. ENV we have covered, stage. So we'll go to the props of the stack. These are the CDK props, right? So what we will go do is inside this props, the constructor props. So this is the props. I will just call it as a props are required argument. And I will just say REST API stack props. I will define this as a another interface. Export interface. <clears throat> so we just extends the existing CDK interface CDK dot stack props and we can define all our uh, custom arguments which we are passing right it is of type stage which we are getting from stage is the type which we have defined in the win.ts I can import it from there okay this stage lambda path This is of type string required lambda handler. Is of type string. Rest all are like okay project name, lambda description, version. All are optional argument. And we are also getting uh, what are the default CDK props like ENV, description. These are the props. Description. Then we have environment. Environment contains two things. Your which particular uh, account name, account number, and your reason. Right? And termination policy, true, false. When you destroy, is it going to terminate everything? Okay. Now we can access all these properties here inside our stack. We can access these properties through the props. const all these things coming from props and what all things we are trying to get stage tech name lambda path and lambda handler and we can pass all these things here directly lambda handler this is lambda path so code means what is the where are we getting the code from so cdk aws lambda Okay, we are directly importing lambda here. That's good. Lambda dot code dot assets from and this is the lambda path. So you will specify lambda path because from assets means it requires the file path from where it is going to get the GIF file. Lambda handler retention and here we can just make it little dynamic based on the stage on which you are deploying. So it will be something like okay, REST API handler development. If your environment is development, otherwise it is production staging. Based on that, your Lambda function name will be placed. API handler, development, API handler, production, API handler, staging. 
and environment policies similarly rest api gateway here also we can make it dynamic stage rest api stage stage name is development stage name i will once we deploy it then you will know that api gateway puts up the stage which can be development rc productions or whatever you have okay now let's see why it is complaining some argument might be missing version is missing so let's add some version yeah so these are the argument we are passing project name lambda path important rest api zip which we already have here. So let's configure your AWS environment and do the CDK deploy. Okay, here another important part is the stack name because the based on the stack name also only we are deploying. So let's put give a better stack name, REST API handler and make it dynamic based on page. So this is our stage name, uh, sorry, stack name, and we deploy based on the name of the stack, CDK, NPX CDK deploy, REST API handler, and whatever the, the name we are putting, export, stage, let's say I'm putting development, that this is a normal variable I'm adding. So this stage development will be get added here. I need to get my AWS account number for development and the reason and I can just target deployment after configuring the AWS profile. So let's log in to AWS credentials. I'm logging to the root user. So this is your AWS account number, account ID, which we will just copy it. And this is for development. Okay, and what is the region? E US East 1. So I think we are good, US East 1. And we are targeting development. So I got my access keys and secret key. This is my access key and you can generate a secret key. Configure using AWS configure command. And let's get started. So you can see here I'm running these commands. I ins I'm inside the infra folder, C npx cdk deploy, rest api handler development. Okay, this error package.json. I think package.json is just right outside. I'm just doing a one more path. I will do this command again npx cdk deploy cdk deploy we are using synthesis time here you can see cdk out folder it is generating it is generating a it will generate a cloud formation template after the synthesis process and this is our stack which we have Okay, API get and we can also print all these resources which we are creating like okay, you are creating a, a Lambda and then API gateway. So you can see it is now it is synthesis time is done. It is started publishing the resources. We will also take a look onto AWS console. And these are the resources it is going to create. You can see the Lambda role. REST API handler and you can see REST API gateway a particular role for it log retentions and this is the it is asking for us for the approval we'll do done and here we can see the progress REST API development right this is the stack it is pushing through the cloud formation we are inside a cloud formation console and you can see all the resources it is going to create and all the events create in progress, create in progress, and you will see the resources. All these things we have already seen in the some demo examples, like how AWS CDK is pushing your uh, stack through the cloud formation. What all resources, what are the output parameters? This, uh, these are the different events which are happening because it is creating Lambda. These are the output. Uh, it is creating CloudWatch, AWS Lambda, API Gateway. This is the big template it is generating. You can see all these resources it has. This is the stack info. So all the descriptions and all, this is user initiated. 
termination process, tech policy. Here it is. So it is making, it will take some time to deploy all the resources. And once done, we will just review this and we will modify this tech. We will improve whatever things we have, we are pushing. We will also put some uh, parameters. So we will know, okay, this, this is the API gateway. We have received the ARN of the API gateway, ARN of the Lambda in the output parameters using this CDK stack. So let's wait for some time. Okay, so here we can see all the steps are done and this is the REST API endpoint we have received through the API gateway with the stage name development, right? Because this is the proxy gateway which we have created. So through, through proxy gateway, it is going to trigger the Lambda and Lambda is nothing but our Nest JS service. You can see here, you can also add these uh, output parameters. So you will get into the console. What is a function ERN and this is the proxy gateway, right? So whatever the request you hit here, it's proxy true. It is going to trigger this handler, Lambda handler, which is API Lambda. Okay, so let's now check on that. So this is our API gateway and Lambda. So you can also check the API gateway. And here I'm checking the Lambda. Lambda trigger, if you see this trigger is added as a API gateway. So API gateway is a trigger which is uh, deploying this, right? So when you hit the API gateway, it is triggering, it is hitting the Lambda, it is targeting the Lambda because on the API gateway, this, these are the, the resources. You can see proxy, 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 because we made the proxy true. So if you go to the Lambda, uh, API gateway and check the resources, you can see any request which is coming here is going to this Lambda integration. Any request coming to the proxy is going to the Lambda integration. So proxy means whatever is going to hit on to this particular stage, uh, the, this whole URL, all the requests will be directly delegated to the Lambda. And now Lambda is nothing but a router, Nest.js router that will uh, respond based on the API path or whatever the API you are hitting to that. So we have deployed Lambda and now we are just testing that. So I just deployed the Lambda and I wanted to test if it works. I was just checking this endpoint. I mean the server is returning 404 that means it works because there is no endpoint uh, exist on this if I do users. Okay, cannot access user, let me see. Because this is the response coming from uh, APIs only. So if I do API v1 user, yes, we got it. So this response is coming actually from the API. We need to pass the authorization header. I'm just trying to enable, I'm just trying to enable the Swagger docs so we can just see things more clearly. What I will do is I will just check uh, what we are doing in the main.ts set up create document app. And here in lambda.ts also, I can just do the same thing create document. I will just import the create document and inside this create document or set up swagger. Here I can pass the other argument also what is the endpoint. Okay, let's see what how we can override the endpoint interface. So currently it is using docs as the endpoint for it ignore global prefix that is true so that you can override the global prefix which we are using for exposing the swagger docs okay so this is the endpoint swagger module dot setup so we can just make this endpoint configurable i mean this is how also it will work We we'll just make the endpoint also required. So this is the second argument you need to pass. Swagger dot setup endpoint app instance same we need to fix in the main dot ts. We can just say docs. Okay, first argument is app instance.
create document app and endpoint same thing we are doing app and here we are overriding the we can just define okay what endpoint we wanted to use should be forward slash docs same we can update here it should be forward slash docs so first argument is the app instance and the endpoint this endpoint we are using while creating the swagger document and now i will just do this npm run build and deploy again i need to create this zip archive again because i did the change otherwise my application lambda really works now i can just test this lambda let's see if i hit any and and you can see the success this is coming everything come is coming from api gateway and lambda so i can for monitoring we also ha already have enabled the cloudwatch logs view in the cloudwatch logs i can just check because the retention period of cloudwatch logs is 5 days i can check what is happening with my lambda how the bootstrap process and all is happening you can see this is how it is bootstrapping you can see the whole nest js app all the modules initialized and then request response here you can also do the verbose logging so you will get to know what is the the context what is the event object coming i will just try to get some more logs oh this is just an error so these are the cloudwatch logs you can just check this is the lambda function configurations we are not passing anything in the configuration if you just check your environment here Node.js 20 handler name is this lambda dot handler architecture and for configurations permissions like okay I do have a permission for S3 and SNS because I defined that in the CDK stack and by resource you can just read right into the cloudwatch logs function URL the function ERN environment variables are empty right now RDS database we haven't attached anything and default timeout and all these things we is configured here version and this is the stage right how all these things are mapped to the stage stage we are using here as a development so if you go to the api gateway there you will understand the meaning of stage because you can have multiple stages currently it's a development stage here you can have productions or test but for development we are targeting this aws account the, the other stage you can deploy to other environment or you can also have a stages defined here also like stage test or production and you can have a three different lambda but if you want to isolate the aws account then there is no point of creating multiple stages in the same lambda because the other productions and test stages will exist in different aws account okay so let's fix this lambda path and then we will try to see try to hit the api endpoint by passing the authorization header and see the response so I did the build, I will create a bundle again. So I was testing this and I need to tweak this logic a little bit. Uh, this setup swagger, I need to create it locally because the base path of the setup swagger, because this is the base path is going to be for the swagger UI, which I'm going to expose on the docs endpoint. So here I'm going to call this setup swagger endpoint is docs, right? Because this is the custom endpoint you can configure for the Lambda once it is deployed onto AWS. This is the base path for the endpoint to hit the APIs. And this is where the, the whole swagger will be exposed. That is we have configured endpoint and this is override ignore global prefix will be true. So when you call it here I have configured it. I put the endpoint docs. So I will just do the build again. I'm just fixing it. I'm just testing it locally and trying to fix it. NPM run build. I will create the bundle again. So now I will do the deployment again. Uh, this is, will be done in the infra folder. Once we automate everything, things will be smooth. And I will just do CDK deploy. Yeah. So it will deploy the updated zip folder. And it will deploy that as a lambda. So I have redeployed the lambda with a couple of changes to see that this simple mock API works or not. Right? This is the API v1 users. This is the controller, and this is the API v1 get users. 
okay my lambda is deployed if i'm trying to hit it something like this then obviously missing authorization header because there is no header we are passing but when i take test the same thing using insomnia i can see the results and that is good so here actually we are hitting the actual endpoint which is exposed by api gateway so this is the stage this is the router endpoint api v1 users I was not able to expose the Swagger interface, but I will check on that, how we can expose the Swagger docs through the API gateway interface. It should be something like that, but there is something which is not allowing me to return the response. So this is how we can just check everything on that. So API v1 users, and this is 200 and same we can check on the CloudWatch also. So all the statics currently we are not logging much information but we can do some logging and can see lots of things we can check here okay the monitoring and all like the your lambda is getting hit or not and cloudwatch gives you the everything about the logs which are being returned right here these are the runtime configurations which we can pass through our stack so this is our cdk stack which we have and here on from this stack you can just pass the environments which will be exposed these are the policies that means you can read write uh, write uh, events to the sns read and write through the s3 and these are the environment variables you need to pass because once you deploy when you are deploying it this stack you need to have that available in the process.env so that same can be populated in your uh, lambda runtime configurations okay this is the lambda path and handler now it's time to automate all these things but this till this video my more, more my focus was to deploy nest.js as a uh, microservice so that a proxy api gateway can access it and that's already happening that's a this that's a good news till now we have came this far now it's all about uh, putting more patches putting some script so that from the root i just need to do something like okay npm run deploy and stack name and it should be able to deploy this particular service npm run deploy typescript mongo api and it should be able to deploy that to the lambda npm run deploy express app and it should be able to deploy that service as a lambda that's the, the remaining thing but if if you have gone through this much then it's easy to do the rest of the thing okay uh, stay tuned i will be posting more on this but parallelly i'm also going to publish a microservice uh, uh, how to build your startup that's another interesting playlist i'm going to introduce now